All right, HL chemists, this is the last little topic. I'm just going to brush through this really quickly. You'll have a lot more information in your book, but I'm going to cut the unit here where we're talking about stereoisomers, all right? Just introducing you to the importance of molecules that look exactly the same on paper but behave completely different. So we've already come across isomers uh, in the form of structural isomers, and you've been naming them for a long time. So a structural isomer is a molecule that has the exact same molecular formula but just a different arrangement of the bonds. All right, so you've got butane and isobutane over here. You've, isobutane is just a common name of it. You would have called that 2-methylpropane, right? Okay, and then, and they behave completely different. Different boiling points, different reactivity. All right, you can see that this has a tertiary carbon. These are only secondary, primary carbons. They behave very different in the reactions that we learned. Okay, and then we have geometrical isomers that I presented when we had double bonds, okay? These geometrical isomers are a type of isomer called a stereoisomer. And stereoisomers are molecules that have the exact same bonds. All these bonds are exactly the same. You can see in this one, the bonds are not the same. But in this one, the bonds, yes, the bonds, the actual physical bonds are the same. I got a carbon single bond, carbon double bond. All those bonds are the same. If I was gonna calculate bond enthalpy based on the bonds, they should be exactly the same, okay? However, what you would see is that they don't have the same structural arrangement. Okay, on this around this double bond, you have two CH3s on the same side. That was cis, as I presented for alkenes. And now the CH3s are on the opposite side, and that's trans. Those are geometrical isomers. And if you heated this up, if you heated that molecule up to a high temperature, it's going to switch into that molecule. So that's called isomerism. All right, so we have a way of interconverting them. The bond breaks and makes and shuffles the arrangement. Uh, but it's also very important because the physical properties of that are different than the physical properties of that. They would have a different, slightly different boiling point. They would also have a slightly different reactivity and they would behave differently in the body because they physically look different. So for biology students in the enzyme, it, this one might fit, this one might not fit. There's a chemical in your eye that behaves exactly like that, that senses light. When light hits this molecule, it turns it to that molecule and you're receptors in the eye will be able to detect when a light photon hits it by changing this molecule to that molecule. All right, and what the topic of today is really focused on a new type of isomer that we haven't seen before, which are called optical isomers, and they're a branch of stereoisomers. The same bonds, just a different spatial arrangement. So here's the geometrical isomers I just presented. Okay, for chlor dichloro, these are chloro, that's ethene. That's what we just presented, and here, are optical isomers of lactic acid for the biology students and for you guys who, when your muscles burn, that's the chemical that's making your muscles burn. And you can see that the bonds look exactly, the black atoms are carbon, red is oxygen, white is hydrogen. They look exactly the same. Here's my carboxylic acid C double bond O, O. Okay, that's on the top, looks exactly the same. That's an alcohol, that looks exactly the same. That looks exactly the same. They should be the same molecule, but they're, they're not, okay? They are both lactic acid, but they are, whoops, let's change the color of this. They are mirror images, okay? They're mirror images, and if you would take this molecule and try to flip it over, you would find that the spatial arrangement changes. This OH, Okay, this OH, when you flip everything over, this OH might not overlap with that molecule over there. Okay, when you flip it over, that OH ends up being over here on that molecule, and that white hydrogen would be over here if you flipped it over to try to overlap, put that double bond where that double bond is. If I flipped it and inverted it, this OH would actually end up over here. Okay, and that's a difference in spatial arrangement. We call that handedness. Okay, so optical isomers are molecules that are mirror images of each other. That's important. They're mirror images, and when you flip that mirror image over, it will not overlap, okay? A good example of that on your body are your hands. Your right hand and your left hand are mirror images of each other. If you flipped the palm of your left hand over so that your palms are up, you would notice that your thumbs will not overlap. If you took that hand and you overlapped with that hand, the thumbs do not overlap. The connectivity is exactly the same, but the spatial arrangement around your palm is different. That's why your right hand will fit in a right glove, your left hand will not fit in the right glove, okay? And because it doesn't fit, they're different, all right? So even molecules have handedness. 
So here I have examples of chiral molecules, or sorry, stereoisomers, okay, which we'll all tell you is chiral or enantiomers. These are two different stereoisomers. They're image, they're, they are mirror images of each other, okay? And the carbon in the center has four different groups around it. That's a very important thing, okay? So when a carbon atom has four different groups around it, it would create a situation where it can have an asymmetry to it to have that mirror image, okay? So this is for higher level. Okay, so there is an asymmetry within the molecule to allow that situation to create a mirror image that will not overlap a handedness to it. Okay, so that's my sy the symmetry plane in the middle, the mirror image, but within the molecule, the molecule is asymmetrical. Okay, so the molecule itself is asymmetrical. When a molecule inside is asymmetrical, it is not, it's going to have a uh, a chiral property to it, or it's going to be an optical isomer. It would have a mirror image that wouldn't overlap, okay? All right, so we would call that carbon a chiral center. Now, what chiral means, oh, let's see, or a stereo center, okay? And what that means is that that center is the center of asymmetry, which gives the molecule a property that will interact with light to rotate light. So chiral means that the molecule will rotate light and it is asymmetrical. That's why we call these optical isomers because these types of molecules interact with light differently. That's how we discovered them, okay? So this molecule here, based on its handedness, when light enters that molecule, it's gonna rotate in a direction. When light enters that molecule, it'll rotate in the opposite direction. So we discovered that if you purified these molecules and placed them in a beam of light, they rotate the plane of light in opposite directions. And that's how we know it. If, if I was to analyze the chemical formula by combustion, if I was to analyze even the structure, I wouldn't see the difference because the bonds all look the same. But when I, it interacts with light, it interacts with it so, such that it rotates the light in opposite directions. Okay, that's why they're called optical isomers, okay, or chiral centers, or enantiomers. You'll read that in your book when you finish this section, okay? So there's a handedness to the molecule, and molecules will always have handedness if that carbon atom has four different groups around it. So if the carbon atom has four different groups, bonded. Okay, it is chiral. Okay, that molecule will have handedness and it will be an optical isomer. So I'll always remember if there are four different groups, okay? So I'm just going to label this. This is a group number. That's one group. That's a different group that's attached. That's a different group that's attached. And that's a different group that's attached. Okay, now there's rules to figure out if I looked at the molecule, I can figure out which way just for the structure of the molecule, which direction the light will rotate. I'm not going to make you learn that. You'll learn that in university. I just want you to understand that mirror image molecules that have an asymmetric center at a carbon will rotate light differently. Okay? So how did we how did we go about measuring the optical properties of those molecules? How did we figure this out? So when you purified those molecules, someone had a brilliant idea to put the molecules into a device called a polarimeter. Okay? So a polarimeter is a device that is able to measure the polarization of light. This is for the physics students. Polarization of light. And you guys have explored this in their waves chapter. Okay, so if you take, for the chemists here that didn't take physics, if you take light, light is produced, is an electromagnetic wave that oscillates. And it, it, when it's produced by a source like this through black body radiation, it, it it oscillates in all different planes. The waves can be up, the waves can be sideways, the waves can be at all different angles, okay? Then if you shine that light through a material that only allows one plane of light to go through, it'll only select one plane of light. Now this light becomes polarized, so only that plane of light fit through those little gaps, okay? Now, the, now all the waves are just oscillating up and down in the Y direction, okay? And then if I took another material, just like this, and I put it sideways, I would not be able to see anything because that light wouldn't be able to fit through that gap. It's not in the same orientation, okay? But this little box in the middle, middle would fill your chemical inside, and if the chemical rotates the light towards that direction of the plane, see how it's tilted to the left, then it might get through, okay? So a chemist would be able to change the direction of that polarization of that filter 
And he would see if I rotated it to the right, because this is, according to him, it's going, the light is being moved clockwise, and all of a sudden he sees light coming through, he would know that the molecule that he made is right-handed, and it rotates the light in the right direction. If he rotates this to the left and, and sees light come through, he knew that the molecule he put in there is left-handed, and he'll be able to figure out that he made the left-handed version versus the right-handed version. And left-handed and right-handed depends on the arrangement of these atoms. Uh, if you want, I'm sure it's in your text to tell you how to do this. I'm not going to hold you accountable for it, but you'll be able to figure out how to look at the structure and tell me, just from the way things are arranged, is it right-handed or left-handed? That's a bonus for you if you want to find out. But the polarimeter is how they would detect it. And so for our physics students, here's a good example of polarization of light as an application in chemistry. I had a physics student do an IA where he built this whole system out of Lego and it worked perfectly and he was able to measure the concentration of certain chiral molecules in juice, which was a really cool IA that he did for physics. All right, so sometimes in the molecules, if we go back to this molecule, you'll see L, you'll see D, you see plus, you see minus. Okay, what does that mean in front of a molecule? Okay, well D and R, if you see that, means that the molecules rotate light in a clockwise. Dextro-rotatory, or right, is right. Okay, dextro is Latin, okay? S means sinistra, which is left, or L means left. The molecules are rotating it in the left direction, okay? So if you see an R molecule, that is a right-handed molecule. If you see an L molecule, that's a left-handed molecule, okay? So what's the importance of knowing the chirality? A chirality is optical like the arrangement of the atoms, okay? What's what's importance of knowing the chirality of the molecule that you made? So here's where we actually learned it firsthand. We didn't know anything about chirality until this horrible event happened in the 1950s, I think, somewhere around that time. What happened was chemists made a drug that would help uh, people who were pregnant uh, minimize pain and uh, cramps during during pregnancy. And it was called thalidomide. So if you took that, it would totally limit the cramps that you would get. Okay, the only problem is one of these structures would bind to the fetus, some certain proteins in the fetus, and prevent things from developing, such as limbs. Okay, so all of a sudden, over the span of two or three years, a lot of babies were born without limbs, and they didn't know why, and then they figured out that it was related to the chemical. Some babies were totally fine, some babies weren't. Okay, and then they realized that when they made the structure, that there must be a mirror image, that something in the structure, some pills worked, some pills made completely opposite effect. And then they realized at that point to investigate and they found out, whoa, okay, structures have handedness. And that's where they realized the problem. So you can see these two thalidomide structures are mirror images of each other. And the chiral center of the molecule, the part that gives asymmetry, would be this carbon right here because it has four different groups attached to it, hydrogen, nitrogen, carboxylic acid, carbon, that's four different groups, okay? And the arrangement is in the opposite direction over here. Okay, so you have a right-handed and a left-handed. This molecule rotes every, rotates everything in the right-handed direction. This molecule rotates everything in the left-handed direction, okay? And if you look in the book, you'll be able to piece together why uh, this is gonna be the left-handed version and that's the right-handed version. Okay, and that's it. That's it for uh, organic chemistry. That's where Dr. G says that's enough for you guys to know in high school. The rest is all bonus. I uh, hope you've enjoyed organic chemistry. It's my favorite of all the units. And I hope you take an organic chemistry class and get to experience working in an organic chemistry lab for your first year at university. It's, it's a lot of fun. Okay, thank you.